Hey. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so this is a little strange for us because usually we're like right next to each other, but we're actually recording over the phone. So now we can start. Basically, you guys, this is uh, our March podcast that I never... <laughs> started recording until may now we're in like what the second week of may but i still wanted to put one out even though we're behind one month um march was a little difficult for me and the beginning of may was kind of tough you know given that it was like mother's day and stuff like that but um <clears throat> to segue from mother's day actually the name the title of this podcast is gonna be from my mom's favorite movie and play which was the lion king where rafiki said oh snap lewis there's a bluebird literally right at the window right now while we're talking. Hey. That is crazy. <laughs> oh my god, I got goosebumps. <laughs> um, bluebird is like my mom's symbol and literally just flew right next to the window while we're talking here. But at any rate, um, remember who you are. So I thought that was a good uh, title for what we're going to talk about today, which, you know, my brother and I, we always talk about relationships and things like that. So it's about, you know, not losing yourself in a relationship, remembering who you are, and not in just an intimate relationship, but any relationship, your family dynamic, friends, anything. And then also we're going to talk about like how to reset, like how to get back to you if you do lose yourself, right? So do you want to talk on... Uh, how not to lose yourself in relationships, bro? Oh, you want me to start? Yeah, I just did the intro. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, one, okay. I don't even know where to start with this one, but how to not lose yourself in a relationship is with self-care, self, self-love. And I think in the last couple podcasts we kind of spoke about this as well mm-hmm. you can't allow yourself to lose yourself in any form or way and if you feel that you do lose yourself you kind of have to find something to turn that energy into positive so that you can keep pushing forward right. so like I don't know how intimate we're going to get with this discussion but this topic is a little you know uh, deep so you tell me how far we going. I mean, as far as we need, you know, you know, we don't ever really filter stuff. And I think that's why my podcast is uh, so relatable is because like we keep it real, you know, like I definitely lose myself a lot in relationships, uh, whether they're intimate friendship or family. I tend to put so many people before myself and then I tend to lose myself because I'm so worried about caring for other people. Mm-hmm. So I I can't say that I haven't been one to lose himself in a relationship because I have. I've been there, done that. And sometimes even when we seek advice, we get tough love. And um, it, it kind of goes back to what you mentioned. You got to remember who you are because nobody's, uh, not that nobody is not worth their time or energy, but at the same time, if somebody's going to try to drag you through the mud and dirt and everything in the book, they are not worth it. Um, so feeling depressed, feeling sad, feeling unworthy it's not something that a person should feel but it is because like even me i i definitely feel that stuff quite often and then i have to take it back to like you know you're this person you know you are worthy of love and things like that right so you you have to kind of just remember that you're human remember that you're a person that feels um, and sometimes one of the best advices that Ma used to always tell me all the time was never act on permanent ne- never make a permanent decision on temporary feeling mm-hmm. so always know what you're doing and be aware of your surroundings take your time 
to analyze and strategize everything. So for me, like remembering who you are when you get lost in relationships, uh, things that I think will help, which help me sometimes is, and I know this is going to sound foolish, but definitely try it. And Lewis, if you ever want to try it, I think it's, it's really fun. Write yourself down. Like a lot of people say, you know, write a gratitude journal, write affirmation journals, which I do, which I think is great. Like I have a gratitude list. But also write down the person that you imagine yourself to be or the person that you think you are, right? And and approach it that way. Like, who is this person? Would this person take that kind of crap? Like, stuff like that. And also spend time with people that lift you up. Like, I know many times where I felt like I was being taken advantage of, walked all over, belittled, and things like that. I would call you or I would call Estania and I would spend time whether on the phone or in person with people that I know love me and lift me up mm-hmm. okay so calling somebody that you're familiarized with yeah okay um so when you okay so i know that i've been guilty as charged when it comes down to this sometimes when you are i'm not gonna say critique or criticized or or given tough love but it 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 falls under that range Mm -hmm. how like for me i know that when people have given me a critique or criticized me for certain actions or certain things that i've done it's very sensitive Mm -hmm. and I know that sometimes it's not the things that we want to hear however um how do you move forward like what are your do's and and, and your cons like what are your pros and cons in regards to tough love really I'm actually glad that you said that because that kind of segues almost into like the reset part um but to touch on the tough love part I think it's like 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 I had mentioned earlier like writing yourself down and thinking to yourself like be your own best friend like what would you tell your best friend if they were being treated some type of way and accepting it like how would you fight for them how would you be like the warrior for them right and then actually be that person for yourself you know and that's kind of like the tough love but in like a gentle way like make sure you're definitely not um I do this a lot like over, like constantly criticizing yourself or putting yourself down like just make sure you don't do that but I think ways to like reset so that your mind doesn't necessarily go to you know critiquing yourself or putting yourself down oh a side note before I say that in therapy um we talk about well me and my therapist <laughs> We talk about not shooting on yourself. Like, oh, I should have done this. I should have done that. Like, basically beating yourself up. And instead of using the word, like, S-H-I-T, we should. Like, stop shooting on yourself. So that's another thing that you can keep in mind. Like, when you start saying, oh, I should do this. I should do that. Like, no, you're shooting on yourself. And that's not okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Um, But to reset, I definitely think it's mind, body, and soul. And to do for your body, like, I think we were talking about it earlier this morning is like, first thing is like, start drinking lemon water in the morning, make sure your skincare is up to par, like, do make a routine, treat your skin, treat your body, massage, get like a little massage tool and and start the circulation or go for a walk, get some fresh air. And then what you were talking about as far as space is like, you wanted to declutter your room and then I was like oh yeah and I need to declutter like my my digital life like my photos and my music and stuff like that so you want to talk on the decluttering part <laughs> get rid of the load throw it all out <laughs> let go <laughs> get rid of all the weight that's weighing you down you'll feel so much better Throw it out. <laughs> if it's not serving you purpose, throw it out. The door is right there. The window's right there. Toss it. Flounce it. Do something with it, but do not keep it. Um, honestly, I think that 
decluttering for me is kind of easy because I've been I, I, I can say that I've been fortunate enough to um, let go of things in certain formats pretty fast and um, a lot of oh damn um, and a lot of people kind of have uh, criticized me for doing that um, it's not that I don't love a person it's not that I don't care about the person but when you truly find yourself and you kind of empower yourself to kind of say you know what you did me wrong I'm not going to hold it against you there's nothing wrong with telling yourself you did me dirty that's messed up but guess what now it's time for me to think about me and put me first Mm -hmm. it's not being selfish it's not being mean it's not being rude or any of that people have to understand that we all put ourselves first in a lot of perspectives before anyone else so a lot of people don't think about the the ending result of when somebody does you dirty or hurts you or you know etc that you kind of have to set your foot down and say I'm strong I'm independent I was raised right I had um, I had an, an amazing uh, figures in my life to become the person that I am um, so to me letting go of anything such as materialistic things love or anything is not as hard as it used to be sometimes you're kind of like yeah but I don't want to let it go but you know I have an attachment to it but guess what fuck it out the door <laughs> yeah like and, and believe it or not it'll be hard to let go sometimes especially things that have like sentimental value but like once you let it go the feeling of freedom is so amazing and it leaves room and energy to focus on other things um, and then also to focus on one thing at a time. I find myself always trying to do a million things at once. And sometimes when you just sit down and focus on one thing, like right now, um, I'm trying to write a book. So every day I try to do at least five to 10 minutes of writing. And it's just really nice to be, you know, focused on one thing. And then also like go out. Don't always be like closed in. I tend to be closed in because you know, being a single person, trying to date and stuff like that, it can be overwhelming and you get hurt um, a, like by a lot of people. And so the safe place is like, oh, I'm going to stay home. But I actually, I'm going to put it out there. I'm buying a house in a year. I'm putting it into the energy. And my real estate uh, agent, someone who's actually helping me a lot, mentioned to me like, look, you're single. You need to go out there, you know, go out. We put yourself out there. And so I feel like going somewhere new and just constantly like going around, even if it's like driving around or going like what we do sometimes by the waterfront. I think that's really helpful to reset and to also get back to who you are and not focus so much on other people. That's that's a good way to look at it. So I feel like this was kind of a short conversation. Usually we do like hours and stuff, but it's only been like 15 minutes. <laughs> So is there anything Um, else like with regards to like these ideas of like not getting lost in in any relationship, finding who you are or remembering who you are and resetting? Is there anything else you want to add before we kind of close up? I just, as somebody that has been in relationships where so I'm somebody that has been lost. Um, that kind it kind of reminds me of that little uh, part in the movie, The Lost Boy. Oh yeah. <laughs> so sometimes I, I find myself that you know, um, not to be religious or in a format of um, of hope and faith, but I always remind remind myself that love hope and faith are the three main and biggest things out there because it reminds me 
that I could believe in myself, right? When you're having hope, you're 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 prospering yourself to become better. By holding on to faith, you see the 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 truth and you're already putting it out there into the the universe like this is for me and it will be for me and love in general to me it kind of just reminds me all the time if you can't love yourself how the hell somebody else is gonna love you um so i always remind myself of that and i know that some people may say but i'm not religious i don't have anything with religion like i don't believe etc sometimes it's not about that but sometimes when you look at things you may look at it from a different angle mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be religious but in order for you to survive in this world a lot of people kind of put certain things to the side and sometimes you have to grab on to what you hold dearest to you so like I like to say palante pues. Yeah, you know? if you haven't listened to our <laughs> podcast on that, make sure you do cuz that one has been keeping me afloat the last month or so. <laughs> <laughs> palante pues. You got to keep looking forward. Um that's just something that I felt that I needed to say um because you have to remember that in the world. I don't know I, I don't know if you've ever sat down at your window for um and looked at how uh squirrels and birds interact with each other. I mean, I used to when mommy would like be talking to them like Cinderella and feeding them and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how well, she used to get these wild animals to just come to the window. This shit was crazy. So sometimes I have a habit of just analyzing how you know, the animal world interacts with each other they they're they're rough with each other they love one another and they're chasing each other how in however form or way mm-hmm. so it kind of reminds me that sometimes even animals are more human than humans themselves man you ain't never lie i saw an instagram reel the other day where this couple had a pet dog but also had a pet bird and the bird is literally playing tug of war with this pit bull with the stuffed animal in his beak and the other with the pit bull with the stuffed animal in their mouth they were playing but they were playing very gently the bird had like tipped over to the side and the dog's not trying to eat the bird the dog is like trying to paw the bird so the bird could like get back up on his feet it was super cute and then the bird got back up on his feet and went and started tugging on the stuffed animal again and it was just so cute like these two different species that you know that are meant to kind of like well, the dogs meant to hunt the bird and they just played like friends. It was like it was really awesome. Um, which reminds me, um, oh my god, this movie um this movie uh on Netflix. Uh, I I I'm going to say I'm going to say this. Um it's with what's her name? Oh my god. Uh you um I don't know if you've seen this movie. Um uh what's her name um hold on it's gonna come to me i gotta remember her name the um melissa mccarthy okay right she's on this movie um god's favorite idiot oh i gotta see this i haven't heard of the title alone makes me want to watch it <laughs> <laughs> so i was watching this movie and there's a scene i'm not gonna mess it up but there's a scene in there that kind of just put me back into the reality of like how animals are Mm-hmm. But I, 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 I think um, that that you should uh, watch that. But there's um, there's this uh, there's the one. Um, sorry, I got the, I got the titles confused. But God's favorite idiot is definitely one that you should watch. But the Starling with um, Melissa McCarthy. Mm-hmm. That's the one that you need to watch because that's the one with the animals and stuff. And it's a deep story. Mm-hmm. Um but just consider watching it. But God's favorite idiot, that's going to have you cracking up to. <clears throat> um you just got to you got to remember certain things at times. You got to find humor, you got to find the connection between the yeah. reality of life. And um I think that animals do that for us even if you don't you're not a person that like pets or etc. There's yeah. always something else out there. Cuz even plants have their own way in in form of connecting with one another. 
Yeah, talking about plants, I miss my babies. I'm homesick. I'm dog sitting right now, and you know, even observing dogs, like, like they are so happy. Like you leave the door, and like five seconds, you walk back through the door, and they embrace you and wag their tail and are happy. Like they haven't seen you in months. You know, it's that idea of staying in the present. You know, enjoying your life for what it is, accepting yourself for who you are, and you're right. You can learn a lot from animals. And um, talking about movies, me and Pinky saw the movie with J Lo, Mother. That movie yes. was incredible. I love J Lo. I've always been a J Lo fan, but throughout history of her acting, dancing, and singing, she's turned me off, and I haven't been a fan of her as much as I used to when I was a teenager. But that movie, she just let everybody know who she was. I was like, you get it, girl. That movie was incredible. She said, don't be fooled by that. <laughs> For I'm, real. Still, I'm still Jenny from the block. And so anyone <laughs> who's like a mother out there, because I think that's another reason why I really haven't focused on, you know, watching, uh, I mean, filming podcasts or YouTube videos uh, in March and the beginning of May is because... You know, I really want to be a mother, but I want that family dynamic, right? I want the the husband, the the child, the white picket fence, you know, happily ever after dynamic. And you know, missing my mother, um, learning about my adopted mother, and then not being a mother—all of that was definitely triggersome for me the last few weeks. And I had to really, again, remember who I was, who I came from, and who raised me. And I had to reset and really, you know, remember the woman that I am. And I might not be an actual mother, but I've cared for a lot of kids out there. And a lot of them look up to me. And so I feel like that movie is a reminder that sometimes you don't necessarily have to give birth to a child. You can either protect them or find ways to make their life better. And that makes you just as much a mother as any other woman out there or parent out mm-hmm. there however you want to call it so to all you mothers all you amazing women happy mother's day and keep kicking butt like j-lo did in that movie <laughs> yo because she definitely did her thing i loved it so how do we want to end this podcast because it's weird not actually recording with you like right next to me <laughs> you're literally in jersey right now and i'm in pa it's strange um, how do we end this? I don't know. I'm having myself a green uh, drink, <laughs> which it has a lot of healthy stuff in there. But how do we end? You're doing your know. reset. I actually have lemon water with ginger right now. See, we're following what we practice, what we preach. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> um, how, how do you want to close? I think we should close with a question, but I don't know what Mm -hmm. question to ask. What do you want it to do in reference? Um, To, like, just basically what we talked about, like, um, we actually talked about more Mm -hmm. than what I thought we would, but, like, um, how not to lose yourself, remembering who you are, reset, and motherhood. Well, like RuPaul likes to say, if you can't love yourself, how the hell is somebody else going to love you? (laughs) <laughs> how about we leave that how how about we leave that with the question okay. if you can't love yourself how is someone else going to love you I like if it any, Amen. if anyone can answer that you got bonus in my book <laughs> alright we'll leave it there until the next podcast bye hasta luego